This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the awesome chat live from the uh, Beachview Studios, Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter with a, another great discussion coming up here. Uh, this is the show where we talk to people doing awesome things in technology and social media and, and startups and in and outside of Pittsburgh all over the place. Uh, and we got a real special one today. Like I said, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You subscribe to Awesome Chat and the rest of our Awesome Cast stuff over on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, as well as the Google Play Podcast app. And of course, video versions on the Awesome Cast Facebook and YouTube. And keep an eye out on the Facebook of Awesome Cast uh, to see when we're going to go live with a lot of these interviews. And of course, the main Awesome Cast uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time for the Facebook Live. And of course, thank you to everybody supporting us on patreon.com slash awesomecast. You guys literally help us keep the lights on here in the studio and uh, help us uh, proceed and grow the awesome nation. Uh, my guest this week is uh, is uh, a prolific podcaster. Um, he is uh, uh, an award-winning podcaster on a podcast about podcasts that teach you how to do it uh, so much. I, I've actually forgotten. There's so much of a list that you're involved in, sir. Daniel J. Lewis is joining with us today. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Mike. I do always love talking about podcasting. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, and you're definitely a guy that that that, that is very. It seems very ingrained yeah, at the list of things. Like I said, you, you're uh, a, a podcast industry expert, award winning podcaster, um, and have been doing this for a long time. And we we're just talking about like you know the upgrade to commercial space and everything a little bit before we we came on here. Um, I, I, I want to kind of go to a, a way that I usually on some of our other podcasts, what the heck got you into this podcasting game? I'm getting this question a lot being this far in the game. For me, it started in 2005 when there was an Apple keynote. I don't remember now if I was watching the Apple keynote or if maybe it was a supervisor at the job where I worked at that time, but I heard about podcasts coming to iTunes 4.9 and I thought this sounds interesting. I'll check it out. So I searched for what I was interested in. I just searched for technology and a couple other things. I found this week in tech grammar girl and Jesus geek. And I started listening to the podcast and I fell in love with it because this was niche content Without all of, all of the annoying local news, local traffic, local weather, local sports, all of that stuff at you know the top and bottom of the hour and all of that stuff, I hated about radio. And it was information I wanted and I could consume it anywhere. So I would actually, I had a 70 minute commute to and from work and I would put my laptop computer in the passenger seat of the car and play the podcast through the speakers in the, from the computer. And that's how I would listen to podcasts during my commute. I fell in love with it. And then a couple of years later, it just hit me that, hey, I know how to do this. Mm -hmm. I know how to record audio. I knew, know how to edit. I know how to work with a website. I can figure out an RSS feed. I want to make my own podcast. And the first one that I did actually make, it wasn't my first idea, but the, it was the first one I launched, was a clean comedy podcast called The Ramen Noodle. And since then, uh, those first couple of years really struggled in podcasting, learned a lot, and felt like when I was ready to launch the Audacity to podcast in 2010, I had something to say. I felt like I had a perspective unique in podcasts about podcasting, and I wanted to share that with the world. And then things have really taken off since then. That's awesome. So, you know, I, that's always been an interesting uh, idea for me. Uh, you know, I, I thought of the story about like an early pod camp of I was six months into podcasting in well, 2006, right? I was like, well, what the heck do I know about it, right? And it's like, well, you have an experience that nobody else does. You know more than the next person, right? Is that kind of the idea that said, hey, I should teach people this? Well, what I thought is I come from a background of production and public speaking. I've been doing public speaking since I was 13 years old. Oh, wow. And so I've learned things about how to communicate information, how to present it, how to tell stories. I had a big background in children's ministry, actually, and, and working with kids who lose attention after 20 seconds if you're not interesting. So I thought, 
well, I want to bring this perspective to the space as well as the other podcasts about podcasting, which I only knew of two at the time. And I thought the space was saturated then. But I thought, well, these other podcasts about podcasting are good, but they're missing something. They're missing this perspective. They're also missing specific information about the software program, Audacity, which is the program I chose to use when I first started. I think every podcaster probably starts with Audacity. And these other podcasters would say, oh, you can do this somehow in Audacity, probably. Well, I wanted to be more specific. So I wanted uh, both the search engine recognition for the term Audacity and podcast. And my podcast from the beginning, I knew it would be first a podcast about podcasting and about the courage, the guts. So that's why it has the double meaning in the name, the audacity to podcast. Absolutely. Um, there's, there's, you know, I, I know we, we kind of connected over some some promotion over uh, the, the podcast movie that, that's come up on iTunes, The Messengers. And, and there was a lot of that discussion about, you know, you're talking about the audacity. And I think uh, Dave Jackson was talking about like holding in that ego when somebody actually responds to something you said, you know, and like loses weight or something like that. Um, and I guess one question is, you know, people say, especially the social media world, you know, is this like a big bundle of narcissism going on that we all have to have be, get likes and everything like that? It, it, do you think it's something a little more pure than that uh, uh, in that regard? I know some people may want to evaluate the personalities of such and say, yes, there's some narcissism. Maybe there is, maybe <laughs> there isn't. The main thing is these are people who are passionate about something. The majority of podcasters are independent content creators. They are so passionate about these subjects that they would talk about these subjects for hours, even if no one was listening, which is exactly what happens when they first start their podcast. <laughs> so yep. it, although it may seem narcissistic, it's really people sharing their passions. Mm -hmm. And when you get down into the niche, that's when you really connect with people on a passionate level. So the people who are equally passionate about that subject too, will suddenly feel extremely connected to that host and not feel like they're all into themselves. They're sharing a passion with each other. It seems like, it, 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 yeah, it seems like the podcast has become kind of the uh, rallying point for a lot of communities at this point. It is because we can communicate so much better with our voices. Mm -hmm. Some people really struggle with writing, but they're okay with speaking. And you see this like in the internet communities and such, you can't even tell that English is a person's first native language <laughs> with the way that they write sometimes right. because it's so horrible, yeah. so hard to understand, but you talk to them and they're easy to understand. Well, look at it the other way. You can also edit a sentence to perfection. But you can't edit the spoken word to perfection without it being noticeable or without having to do hundreds and hundreds of takes, but then you lose the energy. So there's a lot of authenticity and transparency that comes through in the spoken word and in podcasting. And I think that really builds a community because people are connecting with other people. And that's what I hear so often is people saying, I feel like I know you. I feel like I know the podcasters I listen to because I listen to them episode after episode after episode. I've gotten to know them. They talk so personably. They're so relatable. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, and that's I know that's one thing that attracted me originally to podcasting. Again, like, like you, uh, at least uh, This Week in Tech was one that, that really caught my attention and, and saw this as a possibility. Um, you know, was that that conversation, right? Like kind of that, I call it kind of like, unclean versus what you what you kind of were listening to on radio at the time right like not highly produced but just a let's just have a conversation and see people want to want to listen to it at the time right i was listening to talk radio at that time mm -hmm. and that was interesting but it was so often stuff i just wasn't interested in i'd gone through all of the audiobooks that i was interested in listening to so when i found podcasts these were the kinds of conversations that i would be having with friends and yet these were perspectives from experts and people that I had no idea who they were. Like Leo Laporte, I didn't know who he was before I listened to podcasts. I know a lot of people followed him from uh, TV shows and Dutch and Adam Curry, people knew from MTV. Well, I didn't know who any of these people were. I just knew they have conversations I enjoy. I like listening to this. I'm getting the kind of information I want, the education, the inspiration, the entertainment, all that fits my needs. Excellent. 
Um, so, you know, being, being as long of a podcaster, I've seen this, a lot of my friends that have been, you know, podcasting for 10 plus years have seen this. Um, there was a resurgence several years ago. We're seeing like, you know, bigger companies like ESPNs getting on the bandwagon of, of, of podcasting. Um, and, and I love when I was like, yeah, I'm podcasting. I was like, oh, that, that I didn't, you know, I, you know, they think it's only been around for like three, four, five years when Serial came out or something like that. Um, what do you think about that transition that has become become kind of a bigger platform because of properties like that? Well, you look at the actual data that shows podcast measurement. Like Edison Research has done a fabulous job of doing polling data to survey the average Americans, and it's shown consistent year-over-year growth. Even when Serial hit the scenes, yes, Serial got really popular among people who already listened to podcasts. Mm. And because of that, it did get a lot of coverage. It brought a lot of attention to podcasts. But still, you've seen consistent, slow growth over the years. Look at how podcasting was created. This, as opposed to pretty much all other forms of media and broadcasting, podcasting was from the ground up. Whereas everything else is from the top down. You can't easily broadcast as an independent creator on a television station, but you can have your own podcast. And so because it's so much the opposite of the way that the rest of media worked, I think that we're always going to see slow, gradual growth. We won't see a hockey stick growth, even though we are getting a lot of attention and a lot of big names are coming into podcasts. And I think we do need these big podcasters in the space because they need to show what's possible. They need to inspire everyone else. They need to bring more attention to podcasting. But the, the, the evangelists are really, we, the fans of podcasts, the independent content creators, the independent content consumers, we're the ones that can really help the industry grow more than anyone else. So it's, you know, they, they, they show up for the Kevin Smiths, but then they discover all these little known like it like that discovery aspect's really big too right because even in itunes you'll see like a kevin smith or espn but then you'll see the little guys that have that have kind of risen to the top the cream of of the grassroots right yeah many people may get introduced into podcasts because of those celebrities Mm -hmm. Uh, whether it's an actual celebrity or maybe it's a super highly produced podcast and they get consumed into that But then it just takes that light bulb moment for them to realize there's other information that may be more relevant. Like, for example, one of the things I like to do is ask people, what's your favorite TV show? And then I search in the podcast app and show them, look, here are a dozen different podcasts about your favorite TV show. Look, this one interviews several of the cast members. This one digs deep into the the philosophy and the, the Easter eggs hidden in every episode. And that's when I see the light bulb moment go off in their minds. It's wow, this is something I'm interested in. And there's a whole lot more depth from other people like me who love the show and are talking about it. It's kind of, uh, you know, people think Talking Dead was a new concept, but really it's, I mean, there were people doing podcasts, Chris Hardwick, for instance, right? Uh, that that, that kind of came out of. Um, so you've, you've done a lot. Like I, I'm looking through your catalog, like you do a Once Upon a Time podcast on your network um on on noodle mix network and uh, a lot of things like that you know what is kind of the most surprising thing over this time and as many different shows as you've done um whether it be from audience or, or or anything like that for me the surprising thing with my own podcasting is being able to start a business from this because when i first got into podcasting, I had no plans whatsoever to start a business. Even when I started the audacity to podcast, which powers my business today, I did want to start a business because at that time I'd been at my full-time job for nine years and I knew it was time to move on. I'd accomplished all of my goals. So I wanted to move on, build my own business, but I had no idea how to do that. I just so happened to launch a podcast at the same time. But then that's when the light bulb moment was for me, I realized this podcast can be the way that I connect with an audience. And that can connect me with a client base to grow a business. Now, the business model has changed significantly over the years. But seeing that, that connection point and realizing that here's an opportunity for me to reach an audience and provide a value so that my audience can give me value back. That was something I stumbled upon. I didn't get into podcasting for that specific reason. 
So uh, I, I deal with a lot of, um, you know, people, you know, talking with me, trying to start a podcast and figure out what those first steps are and everything like that. And I, and I have a, my kind of set of ground rules that I always tell them um, that I like, have on other podcasts. Um, but for somebody looking at this point, because this is a very flooded market of podcasts, right? Um, so I don't know the ability to kind of, uh, you know, be massive in, in this in this day and age today. But I don't think that should be the goal of everybody's. What do you, what advice do you have for somebody that's looking to start a podcast these days? First, pick a niche. Don't try to be the tech podcast that talks about all things tech. Don't try to be... <laughs> the next serial. Don't try to be the next This American Life. Don't try to be the next uh, Pat Flynn or any of these top celebrities or whatever celebrity status you want to give them. Be you and find an audience who is as passionate about the same things as you. Let me give an example for this. I recently spoke on podcasting to a group of mostly IT professionals. And I started asking them some questions, filtering them down. I said, how many of you played video games in the 80s and 70s? Uh, Okay, how many of you played video games in the 80s on a computer? How many of you played on a PC Junior? And then it came down to two guys who had played computer games on a PC Junior in the 80s. And then I asked them, have either of you played King's Quest on the PC Junior? And one guy was kept his hand. And without my prompting this response from him, he said, Oh, yeah. (laughs) When I hit on the niche, that's when I hit on the passion. Mm -hmm. So no one was super excited when I asked any of those other questions. It was when I got down to that niche question. And I didn't expect that from him. I just thought maybe one of them would have had that. And I was going to go somewhere else. But that that showed me that the passion is in that niche. So Find the niche. Don't try to be the number one podcast of all podcasts or the number one podcast in a category. Try to be the number one podcast to your audience that they feel like your podcast of all of the podcasts they listen to yours is the one they don't want to miss a single minute of it because it's so good. It's so relevant. Build that kind of podcast. So to do that, you have to start with a plan and you have to start You can't try to make it perfect. You can refine as you go. Uh, Anyone who gets married will tell you after not very long, they realize they are not the perfect spouse when they first get married and, and they never will be the perfect spouse, but they are a better spouse years later than they were when they first got married. It's a growth process. So start your podcast. Don't get paranoid by trying to find the perfect microphone. But at the same time, don't jump in so quickly that you don't know where you're going or you're trying to be the everything podcast. Pick a niche, have a plan, and start. That's wonderful. That, that, that's, that's a great. Good start for people. Thank you so much for joining us in this conversation. Tell us uh, where what's coming up with you, what's going on with you, where can people get involved with, uh, with your podcast world? If you want to learn more about how to launch or improve a podcast, then listen to my podcast over at theaudacitytopodcast.com. I have over 300 episodes over there telling you about launching and improving your podcast. And if you're already after episode one, then you might want to check out some of the products and services that I offer, like courses, uh, a service that gets all of your global podcast reviews, a membership community for people who have already launched their podcasts and want to make them better, whether that's for money or just for hobby for the art of it so all of that is available from my website the audacity to podcast.com and i'm on most social networks including twitter and instagram as the daniel j lewis awesome thank you so much for joining us uh to our awesome guest uh daniel j lewis uh great to have a conversation with you uh in the podcast world uh please check him out and check out everything else going on at awesomecast.com including all of our past awesome chats uh we're couple of years now, everything again from other podcasters that have uh, built their own little niche in the, uh, in, in, the in the podcast world and, and so much more. Uh, thank you so much. You guys have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.